Hi, this is Dr. Lee Zeitz, and I'm trying something new today. I'm going to be doing a, a, a vlog. You know, we talk about blogs, and right now you're looking at this on drzreflex.com. And I wanted to do some uh, reflecting on a class that I just taught, and I feel really good about. The class that I'm teaching is EdTech and Design, and we have about, oh, about 28 students. The amazing students range from uh, freshmen to seniors, and there are, it's our technology class, which is an introduction to technology for undergrads who are learning, uh, studying to be teachers. <clears throat> We've spent the whole semester doing a number of different um, projects that were based upon um, their identifying objectives and then doing the projects. I mean, it's been a lot of, a lot of good work. And so we're coming up and getting ready for the final class, <clears throat> or the final project. And I, um, this was the day in which I was, in, I was introducing it. And I want to point out a couple of things. Um, number one, uh, one of the things that I'm, <laughs> things are shaking around a little bit. We'll stop. Sorry about that. Um, one of the things is that I've been learning about different ways in which <clears throat> to help students learn. And I've been using this book. It's called Teach Students um, How to Learn. Fantastic book. I'm part of a book club that's, that's being done through our Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning. And, um, and so I, I'm using a couple ideas there, such as images and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> so what we did is we started out the class, and the students were all supposed to have read uh, five characteristics of learner-centered teaching. This is the basis of, of what we're going to be doing. And so what they did, is, and, and interestingly, most of them had seen it, had, had read it, or looked at it. I mean, it's only a couple pages. And also it probably helped that I sent out a text message before class to tell them that, uh, that they did that or that they should review it. Anyway, so what I did is, is I had them um, break into groups. We have seven groups, and I, we have this. there are five characteristics here. And so each one broke into a group. And those characteristics deal with things like that you want to, you know, you want to make it so it's hard, messy work, that you want to make sure that you do include explicit uh, skill instruction, um, that you want to uh, encourage the students to reflect. And actually, that's what I'm doing right now is reflecting on the work that I just did. Um, you want to talk about uh, giving the students some control over the learning process. You know, you can tell them what to do, but you, you want to give them options. <clears throat> and then you want to get them to, to work on collaboration. Now, this is something that, um, so what I did is I started out and I had, I broke them up into, or they all, they all have tables, and I assigned one of those for each of the groups, and they, um, they, they, they discussed <clears throat> the, class, the, the projects that we've been doing in, in our class that fit into that level. Now, while we were doing that, I also had a, a student who um, I knew had artistic talent, and I asked her to take those five and to, to put them up on the wall. Now, I, I obviously would put something like a, a circle in the middle, and then I'd have five circles around it, and I'd put the name in. Well, she went far beyond this, and I'll be showing that. Uh, either it's going to be down below, or I'll, I'll cut it into, into this video. Um, but anyway, she did a great job, uh, and I'm very impressed with what she did. Um, anyway, so, so the thing is that what we got back, they discussed what was happening, and then um, everybody's feeling very positive about the, the fact that these were the things, the learner-centered work is, is something that they uh, are using and, and have been experiencing in our class. Now, so what I'm doing is I set, set up the basis for this, and I said, okay, so now that we've done that, and now we take a look at the learner-centered, now the idea is that one said to, to give you, you know, options, and I'm going to give you complete options. And I started talking about this thing called our interactive uh, learning tool. <clears throat> now, the interactive learning tool is one where they're going to go out, they take a look at their objectives, they identify the objectives, what they want to teach, and then what they do is they... Um, they go out and we, they do what we call app smashing. And they identify different types of apps and different types of online tools. And together they create something that they would be using or that their students would use for learning. Now, I'm, I don't have any examples that I want to show you. There's, I, well, actually, I'll include in, in the below here a, uh, some links to some examples and that sort of thing. But the important thing was that the students were taking ownership. I, I, I pointed out that when I did this in the past, what I did is I started out telling them about this assignment, and many of them ended up looking like, you know, deer caught in headlights. And I was feeling really disappointed about the fact that, you know, I, I wasn't getting it across. This time I was contextualizing it. I'm setting it up. I, we, were, we were setting it up so that they, they looked at, at how their learning had been happening. And then I, I talk about how this is going to be the ultimate aspect of it. 
this context really, I, I think people really caught on. And then I also sh- shared some resources that I had. One resource that I have is, is um, it came from a class that I taught last semester or two semesters ago uh, at, a, at the master's level. And what it was was I had resources, that, a place where this, the students, as they found resources that would like different kinds of apps to use, different kinds of, of um, app smashing events and things like that, that they could just add them to this large Google Doc. And I was going to make another one for my group. And then I thought, I'm just going to have them add to it. So they're going to be getting the benefit of all these other teachers, or and there are teachers, who have put together this information, and then they're going to get to add their own. And then um, we continued, and, and the thing was, I, I, I went over, and uh, after everybody had talked about, you know, I told, I'm jumping back a little bit, um, I told you that everybody, each of the tables shared uh, their points of view as far as these characteristics. I also had Emily, who was the uh, the artist who who did the pre uh, did the uh, picture. I had her explain her aspects of it too. So here's the thing. The thing is that um, it was very successful. I, I made sure that what the students were doing. I, I wasn't teaching it. I, I started out by building purpose and talking about the reason as to why we're putting this together like this. So I built the purpose first, and then I talked about the context within which this was, this was, was being created. And that context was one where we're at, we want them to take and culminate all the, uh, use all the aspects and, and the skills that they've learned this semester and, and to go out and actually explore and find new tools and new apps that they can use on their own. We're not telling them what to do. We're, we're telling them, you know, giving them parameters, but we're not telling them what tools to use. We're not telling them a whole lot of things because we want them to go out and be creative on that. And I felt really good about this. And, and the students had a, a very positive attitude. And actually the last thing that I did was I showed a video that I made a couple of years, well, about a year and a half ago. And it's a one-minute video, which is an introduction to our, um, our, our uh, this assignment. I did it using iMovie, and, you know, they have a one-minute trailer uh, option where, uh, where you use iMovie, and it basically is this huge template, and it help, you can put things in it. It's, it's really a lot of fun. I also pointed out that what I did is that I didn't know anything about how to do this, and uh, one day, about two semesters ago, I was sitting in the library, and my class started at 2 o'clock. I was sitting in the library at noon, and I said, I'm going to make one of those. So I, I sat down, and I taught myself. I, I read the materials, and I taught myself, and, and I created this. And I didn't quite get it all done, but I did share it with the students. So what I was doing is I was pointing out my experiences and how my what I've done in my life as far as trying to address the same kind of challenge that we're giving them. And I got to tell you, the students left and they had a, a very positive feeling. I have a good feeling about this assignment. Uh, we'll keep you posted on how things are going. And this has been a, a very um, invigorating uh, and, 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 and helpful uh, reflection that I've done here. Uh, maybe doing that again. By the way, if any of you are my ed tech and design students and you've actually watched this thing all the way through, uh, May I suggest that you could you could put a uh, a vlog on your blog using Blogger, and I can show you how to do that just as easily. So you can, instead of writing just four sentences or something like that, talk about something that's meaningful, and you can actually do it in person. So it's been good talking to you. Hope things are going well. Have a good day. <laughs>